Hello, Bob Paul here with a wholesome farm video. And I have to tell you, this is probably the most important video I've made to date. And I would ask a special favor, please, please share this with everybody you can, every gardener at least. You can email it, Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever. This is important. This I'm gonna show you today a revolutionary way of growing a worm farm or having a worm farm so that you can have worm castings for your garden. This is nothing like what you've seen before. Uh, we've been doing this for a year and a half and have had tremendous success and now it's time to show uh, what we can do and I'm telling you this is a game changer. Please please consider sharing this video with everybody uh, you know especially those who garden because this is that important. We'd love to see this video go viral. But um, take all the mess, all the work out of uh, worm farming. Make it so easy a uh, three, three, four year old can do it. So please watch the video. What we're going to do is, uh, if you've seen some of my wicking bed videos, and I'll put one here, we've, we've converted a wicking bed into a worm bed. And there's nothing like it out there. And so the first part of this video, we'll sh I'm going to show you how to make a wicking bed. If you've already seen that, just fast forward through that. And then the second part, we're going to show you how we convert that a wicking bed into a worm bed. It's going to change your whole method of gardening, I think, because it's so easy and worm castings in the garden are so powerful. Uh, everybody should be doing this. Here's the tote I was talking about. You can see how large it is. Um, this, the tote I use for washing, you can see the difference in size. This one's much bigger. So I, I'm excited to try this as a wicking bed. Don't really need the uh, lid but if you want to just make a planter box out of this you can sit the, uh, the tote in the lid and this will catch any excess water but, uh, so that's one thing you can do with it now for a wicking bed you need four inches at the bottom as a reservoir and no more than 12 inches of soil or whatever you're going to put in here to uh, to grow with. And so one thing I noticed, this is 19 inches tall. So we don't want to go more than 16 inches because uh, if you go over 12 inches, then you're not going to get the wicking that you you want. So in this. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see in the camera, but this has ridges for strength in here. And where these ridges are, they're about 15 and a half inches off the, the bottom. So what first thing we need to do is I've got some paint here. And this is enamel paint. Um, this I got for $4 a can. You can buy some cheaper paint for like a uh, dollar two dollars a can but I, I found it won't uh, it won't adhere to the uh, plastic and I've had some of these containers around for going on five years now so basically you want to use an enamel paint and I'm going to paint the first four inches or so inside and the reason we paint this with a white enamel, and this is a flat, not a gloss, is because reflection. I don't want the, the blackness of the uh, tote to be absorbed, uh, absorbing heat in the summertime. That's just a death for your, your plants. Plants, they, uh, they sense their temperature from the root system. So if this tote is absorbing immense amount of heat when it's 105 out, 
your plants, they're just not going to survive. So by doing it this way, I have discovered that we've had no problems growing in these totes. Now I'm going to paint the outside of it as well, but uh, this way, <laughs> I just put my, my mark on there, my fingerprints, but this way I can uh, keep the, the sun from over uh, baking the, the roots. And the rest of it I'm not going to paint because it's going to be covered with soil. And the reason I'm doing this is because I can only put soil up to about this level, 16 inches up, and so there's going to be about three or four inches exposed all the way around this uh, new bed. And so by painting it white, it'll reflect heat and it won't absorb it. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this. You don't need to watch. I guess I could fast forward it, but anyway, I'll show you the finished product and then uh, we'll go from there. Our uh, black tote is now white with the enamel. Um, that'll last. I've got one, like I said, it's lasted about five years already. And uh, one, one can of paint did the whole thing and then I ran out. So uh, I bought two cans just in case I didn't know, but you can get away with, with one can. So I'm going to let this dry and then uh, we're going to put the rest of it together. I'll probably do that tomorrow and I'll show you what all pieces need to go in here, uh, what kind of soil to use, and I'll give you the cost of setting something like this up. And uh, I'm pretty excited about it. We'll, uh, we'll see how all this turns out. Well, it's the next day. Our paint's dry, and uh, we're ready to continue on making uh, this wicking bed. So the next step is to make the drain. Um, like I said, we're going to have a four inch reservoir in here, and so at four inches, we want to put in a, a drain. Now, I've seen people put in bulkheads and valves and all kinds of pipes, and but you know what? The cheapest thing is just get a little three-quarter inch piece of tubing it'll squeeze in there and uh, it works real good because if you get too much water in here you you want it to drain out anyway so to put in the tubing I've got here uh, it's a 7 8 bit just undersized a little bit because you don't want to you want to oversize so even though this is three-quarter inch tubing you don't want to oversize it and uh, the easiest way to make this, do it this way, is uh, I've got my Sharpie here. Now, I'm going to put it on the end here because I want to stack these up in a row. And then that way I can put pipe over and I can put a cover over them because they're almost four foot wide. Uh, but you could also put it in the middle if you're putting them in a, a line. You, you could put the drain in the middle. It doesn't really matter where the drain goes. But what matters is, is that it's four inches. Off the bottom. So we'll do that. should be able to squeeze in there we go nice and tight and there you have it that's uh, that's our drain so the next step need to plug sitting in there so the next step is we need to put in our fill pipe and so that's what this is and I use two inch pipe so we're gonna and this is just all press fit there's no point in uh, gluing it because if it leaks we don't care that's where we want the water to go anyway so we're gonna sit this in here and this is a 19 inches tall so I cut this pipe at 20 inches 
just to give us, and, and with the elbow, it gives us a little bit higher so that uh, this will be above enough so we can get a garden hose in here and, and fill this up. Now, you can certainly go cheaper and use smaller diameter pipe, but you'll live to regret it. That's why I use two inch pipe because uh, as you fill it up, it'll drain fast enough and there's enough volume that it won't, uh, the water won't back up and overflow out the, the intake. If you use a smaller pipe, you're gonna be frustrated or you're gonna spend a lot more time trying to fill it because you gotta go a lot more uh, slowly. Anyway, then we're gonna put a cap on this end. We're gonna put this in there like that and just sit it in there. And um, we don't need it to go quite all the way to the end, so I've just made it 36 inches. And uh, so the whole point now is to drill some holes. So I'll set this down out of the way. And uh, I'm going to put this in, the, the intake in, where the drain plug we just put in is, so that when I fill it, I can see where it drains. But I want the water coming in mostly at the other end. So I'm only going to drill about half of this pipe and you just take a, a bit and you want the bit uh, just to be smaller than the uh, the rock you're going to use and you just go all the way through that uh, then I'm going to turn it and drill holes opposite. There we go. That's all there is to it. back up here now what I like to do is uh, have it so that the these holes are kind of not quite but uh, so they're 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 more angled towards the bottom and then that way the water will start uh, draining quicker And that'll go in there just like that. And uh, we've got it set up. And I always put a cap on. You don't press it down hard. Just let it sit there so that leaves and debris doesn't come in. Because once you've got this pipe set in there, uh, everything, all the dirt and rock and everything's going to be in here. You don't want to be trying to pull this up and pulling out your pipe. Because I just mess everything up. So I just lightly cover it. Now... Uh, before we go out and set it up, I want to let you know the cost. So the toke was 20 bucks, and with the pipe and the rock now, the, the rock you use, now you want to make sure you have pH neutral rock. So you can't just use any rock. So uh, the test for that is wherever you get your rock, and I'll tell you, river rock is usually pretty good. Pea gravel is pretty good. Um, if you can get shale, that's a neutral rock. But to tell, if you take a mason jar with some vinegar in it and you drop a handful of the rock in there, if it bubbles like it's boiling, it's not good rock to use. You don't want to, you, you don't want the rock causing problems as it uh, wicks up and uh, uh, creates your problems in your soil. So, you, you know, if it's just got a, a bubble once in a while or no bubbles, then that's rock that uh, pH neutral that you can use. So uh, anyway, now that this is basically made, we'll go and we'll set it up uh, out in the garden. I just realized I don't think I uh, 
finish explaining the cost. So you've got $20 for the tote <coughs> with the pipe and the elbows and the caps and stuff. You got uh, about uh, less than 10 bucks. I've got um, three cinder blocks. They're dollar seventy each. And uh, then you, you've got to put in your rock, and that's, that's where I got off on the tangent on how to pick your rock. But the rock can vary where, where you get it a little bit. You're going to have a weed barrier that goes down, so you'll have to buy a bigger row of that at first. But then once you've got it, it'll make tons of these beds and then whatever soil media you put in. So uh, right now it looks like each tote can be made for somewhere between 65 and 75 dollars in materials which you know when you think about gardening that's really not too bad and like I said I've already had one of these last uh, about five years and some others four years and I've been adding to it so I really like these these totes they seem to hold up really well as, as long as they're they're painted so 65 to 75 dollars uh, is your material cost and they're pretty easy to do and now this is a little bit bigger but you know, you get two guys on here, you can move them if you need to. We're here uh, setting up the new wicking bed worm farm. And uh, we put some, uh, an old political sign, some carpet down just for weed protection. And we leveled out the uh, uh, cement blocks. So this is perfectly level and it's really critical probably the most critical part of the whole process is to make sure that this is level. That way you get an even wicking uh, of the water. Now we're gonna create the reservoir, the four inch reservoir. And to do that, we the, showed you earlier, we built our pipe. So I'm gonna stick it down. And I'm gonna put it on this side because we'll water here. And then I've got the uh, overflow tube coming out this back end here so we'll put water in until we see it coming out and then uh, from that point on we'll put a, a bottle down here and uh, er, you know as you put tomatoes or watermelon or whatever it rains the excess uh, worm juice will that this will fill up with worm juice and it'll come out the, uh, the side and you can pour that right into your garden so now what we need to do, we get this in, we're going to fill this up with four inches of rock to create our reservoir. And we'll just fill that up to four inches. So you can see here we've got our uh, shale. This is shale actually. It's a... Uh, lighter than rock about 50 percent lighter which i like to use in these totes because then you can move them around if you need to also it's ph neutral it's very important that you use a ph neutral rock um, the way you can tell if it's ph neutral when you go to buy the rock take a mason jar or something with you with uh, a few inches of vinegar in it put the rock in if it bubbles it's not good rock to use. That means it's not pH neutral. If it doesn't bubble, then you can go ahead and use that rock. Um, if you can find shale, that's really good because it's lightweight, but it's not necessary. Any any neutral uh, granite is neutral rock. Um, so we use that in the aquaponics. Anyway, now we've got the, the reservoir built and this rock will wick. And as the water, it, it'll wick up into our medium and typically if you've seen and I'll put uh, examples of my wicking beds uh, we use we we only use potting mix and uh, compost or maybe uh, uh, what's it called uh, you can use some vermiculite uh, this stuff we have sitting up by the front door. Uh, peat moss. Peat moss. You, you, peat moss is, is good to use. I'm getting older, so my mind's not working as good. 
anyway, now we've got to put on this weed cover. And I've made this little slit. I want it tight, so I'm working with it here. I put just a small enough. Oh, there we go. And we do this because, well, when it's a wicking bed, we want to keep the roots from growing down in the rock. In this case, we're going to want to keep the worms from going down and, and clogging up the rock. So we, uh, we start with, with this end, and then uh, we put this down in there and see how it's up on the sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with some peat moss and we'll put that in here and we'll put it all around the edge so that this is stuck up against the side real well and then that should help keep the worms out and the water can wick up right through this no problem. Now we're going to get to the good stuff. This is a revolutionary new concept for raising worms. It is so simple anybody can do it. You're in an apartment and only have a patio garden or a regular backyard or even a bigger operation. This will work for everybody. It is the uh, it's the most exciting thing I've uh, come across and we've been doing it for a year and a half now and we've had no issues and I have to tell you how this came about uh, about two years ago I did a class off of my meetup group on uh, how, how to make wicking beds and a friend of mine Frank he, uh, he made one, took it home, and he set it up just like what we've got right now. He, because I, I gave all the materials except for the media to put inside. And so he put the gravel, he set it all up, but uh, he didn't have anything to put inside. And, you know, one thing led to another and time had gone by. And next to it, he had uh, his worm farm that he's had for years in a styrofoam uh, cooler. And over time, it had started to crack and break, and it was no longer functional. So, because he didn't have anything else to do with it, uh, he just dumped it into the wicking bed. And discovered that, uh, this is what we discovered through the wicking bed process. Because Mother Nature cannot wick up, uh, you know, sopping wet it just wicks up a perfect amount of moisture it was perfect for the worms now one of the problems there are several ways to raise worms and they, they all involve a whole lot more work than I wanted to do and uh, some of them is messy so one way is to put them in a container and you feed them but you got to be real careful because if you put too much moisture in you'll kill the worms if you don't have enough moisture, you'll kill the worms or they'll, they'll crawl out and leave. And, and so it's, it's a balancing act. Another way is stacking. You've probably seen the stacking towers. But then again, you've got to fill one tower. You've got to take it off, fill another. It, it's, it's kind of a mess also. Uh, at least it's more work than I want to do. The third way I've seen is uh, what they call a pass-through and you, you build a frame and, and a box and then you got to scrape the bottom. The commercial ones uh, have a, a, a rake that kind of goes through and scrapes and then you got to pull everything off the bottom and that's just a lot of work. So what we discovered here that if you set your worms up in a wicking bed because it wicks up just a perfect amount of moisture you never have to worry about your worms uh, getting too wet or too dry. It's just a perfect amount of moisture for them You just have to come out and feed them once in a while and make sure they've got food and as long as they're happy They'll stay inside now. Here's the thing in the summertime when it's really warm here at least in Texas when you have to 105 or 106 Because we painted this bed white and because of the wicking action the the, the material inside stays cool Cool enough for the worms that uh, they're still happy. In the winter time, it's the same same thing. Uh, in fact, 
these come with a, a nice yellow lid in the winter time if you want you can cut a little hole right here and you can sit the lid on top to keep ice or snow out but you put in a little extra uh, food to compost that'll create enough of a uh, little bit of heat that the worms they'll you know you don't put it through the whole thing you just kind of put it like on one end and uh, let it uh, heat up a little extra and it keeps the worms so we've gone through a winter and two almost two summers now we're in our second summer and the worms have had no issues at all it's just been beautiful and uh, the worms they they uh, multiply they double about every 90 days and you can't overdo because they'll regulate themselves if there's too many worms they'll slow down production or you could go into a second bed now I've got a video I'll post that uh, about the benefits of putting worm castings in your garden it's absolutely amazing um, if you watch that other video you'll see my plants I put four ounce scoop in each hole when I put the plants in and the difference between this year and last year and this is terrible soil that they're in the difference is like you know uh, Pop Warner football versus NFL <clears throat> or you know uh, uh, a grade school soccer team versus World Cup let's uh, let's continue and, and, and show you how to, to make one of these so I'm gonna start with some peat moss because it's it's a good uh, uh, bedding for the worms and it soaks up moisture real well and I want to show you we won't do the whole thing but if we take it and we'll put it on the edge I'm going to put some in the center too but I want to prop up this uh, weed barrier real well so that the worms don't go down into the rock I'm sure they're figure out a way but as we fill this up uh, I want to try to keep them inside as much as possible but um, anyway as I was saying we've we're going through our second summer and a winter and our worms have come through fabulously and because this beds bigger what we'll do when we want worm castings we'll load up one side with the food let the other side get eaten down and, add, and the worms will migrate over then we'll just scoop this out over here and use the castings now there still may be a little bit of compost not broken down but for our purposes in the garden that's not going to be a big deal and there may even be a few little worms left and again that won't be a big deal because a worm produces uh, so quickly having a few extra worms in your garden is not going to be anything to worry about so that way there's no and I'm going to probably build a sifter but there's no sifting there's no most of the work is gone there's no mess to take care of the basic things you're going to have to take care of here is uh, just just to make sure that there's food for the worms to eat which shouldn't be a big deal in that there's always enough liquid in here for wicking to take place because in the winter time the wicking helps too because uh, as the the water moves it doesn't freeze and uh, it'll help keep uh, the worms a little bit warmer too but again because it's and oh I want to tell you too if it rains you you know people say well what about See, that's the beauty of it. it it can it can rain and rain and rain three inches the water will just pass through and come out this side can you come over here and so you've got this tube here at the four inch mark and we'll put a gallon bottle down here and we'll just stick this tube down in there and as the worm juice comes out and starts to fill up that bottle we just take it and we can pour it into the garden put it back here and you've always got uh, worm tea to put in your garden so uh, I'm gonna finish filling this out filling this up with some peat moss well not filling it but putting a couple inches in and then I'm gonna go get the worms and we'll put those in okay the other thing I should mention is that we've kind of got this here between uh, our, our, our roosting house and uh, the barn 
because it'll get morning shade, get some afternoon sun, and then in the late afternoon and evening, it'll, it'll get shade. So we don't want to, we want to try to shade this if possible. Uh, if you put some out in the field, you can put, these are wide enough, you can put four foot hoops over them. And I've got a video on how to make bend hoops. I'm showing how to make 12 foot, but four foot's done the same way. And then you can clip some shade cloth over it and in the summertime that'll help too. Right now, I'm going to show you, I'm going to fill this up with water. That's how you do it. And so now the water's going down, it'll leak through the rock. I've got the water coming out at that end, so it has to come all the way down here before it'll penetrate out. The water coming out the hose, that means our uh, reservoir is full. Okay, now I've also got, we have rabbits, so I've got some rabbit pellets to put in here that's uh, good for the worms and then here on the farm we get uh, you know a lot of oh also on this the cap just lightly sit the cap on don't push it down because everything's loose if you push it down you go to pull it up you're gonna pull the whole thing out so just that's just to keep bugs and weeds and stuff from going down in the root system so there's a little bit of worm and you can put uh, your grass clippings all kinds of stuff in here and by the way um, I try to get worms locally there's a place right here in Georgetown that does worms but I've tried for weeks they won't they won't answer their phone and uh, just, they don't reply to the messages or emails so I just went ahead and I got them from Uncle Jim's he's real popular he does all kinds of insects and worms and right now he's got his summer he's got a sale going on you can get 2,000 red wigglers mix for uh, for about 40 bucks so now the reason this is so important to do I want to get down to the cost we bought this year 30 pounds of worm castings to put in our garden. By the way, just a side note, I have worms in all my aquaponics too. That, that helps the aquaponics. But our land around here, the Texas A&M has done a study and the land around here is 0.5 uh, with uh, organic material. And to be a healthy soil, you need 5.0. So our soil here is extremely unhealthy from years and years of farming and, you know, organic chemical, I mean, um, synthetic chemicals, and it's just not. So this is a way to start bringing back the, uh, the, the land. Because here's the cool thing about worms. You know, what, what comes out of the south end of a northbound worm? worm poo right so we call that castings and the cool thing about a worm casting it's got all the nutrients it's it's extremely uh, I don't know if it says on here but uh, it, it, it's higher in potassium and phosphate and some other stuff than even your organic fertilizers and science doesn't even know how a worm can do that because it takes decaying matter and it beefs it up somehow and it's all broken down so when a root uh, touches a worm casting it can absorb all those nutrients and minerals and whatever's on that casting and once it's done that that casting is sterile and there's a word we call for a sterile casting it's called dirt so that's how we make dirt so um, worms are, are a vital part of our ecosystem and to do it ourselves so anyway back to we, we bought 30 pounds, two 15 pound bags of worm castings, it was $80. So they're very expensive. Now, if you don't have the time and, and don't want to mess with it, 
that's fine. You can buy worm castings, but this way it makes it so simple. Anybody can do it, even on a busy schedule. Because, I mean, you're 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 checking the worms not even maybe five minutes a week. Because you're, you're just adding some food and maybe checking and make sure you, when you come out, just pop it open. Oh yeah, I can see water down there. If you don't, uh, just add a little till it comes out the end. And uh, I mean, just real quick. And the worms will do all the work. They'll they'll stay in here. They'll be happy. They'll keep working. And nature will wick it up just a perfect amount. I mean, this is a revolutionary way uh, of uh, doing worms. Like like I asked, uh, please. Uh, share this with everybody uh, email it to every gardener you know uh, put it on Facebook this we we'd love to have this video go viral because it's it's so unique and so beneficial for gardeners and it's so easy to do I mean uh, little kids can get involved with this this is this is this is the next best thing to slice bread I think this is this is gonna be huge so anyway, now I'm going to put in the worms. I got the worms uh, a few days ago, but I didn't have this quite ready. So I put them in this five-gallon bucket, and we've already been feeding them. And you can see this is all worm poo around here that uh, they started to... Uh, there you go. Look at all those worms. Yeah, my wife just made a good comment. You want to make sure that these worms you don't add to your aquaponic system because worms can carry E. coli and you're not just not sure uh, what these, these worms weren't raised to be put in aquaponics. So um, they, they, they sell worms, they're even a lot more expensive to put in aquaponics or find somebody like me who's already got it and um, and put those in but uh, look at these worms there they're, they're gonna go down and hide the water's gonna wick up and just to make them a little a little happier I, I gotta put some newspaper down but I'm gonna put a little bit of peat moss on top of them just because they don't like the Sun Anyway, there's a, there's the start of your uh, worm casting bed. Now the thing is, with the tote and the materials and everything, and the $40 for the worms, we've got about $110 invested in this. And um, I can tell you this will produce probably somewhere between 120 and 150 pounds of compost a year so you figure at 40 bucks for every 15 pounds in your first year this is going to weigh more than pay for itself so this like I said is so simple so easy now we filled it up we've done this we don't have to worry about this again for a while we get some scraps we can collect them in the kitchen throw them in here usually we're throwing all this stuff to the chickens but now we're going to share it and put it in with the worms you can set a watermelon in here they love watermelon if you got a watermelon that's starting to rot or isn't ripe enough and the worms will just go after it and all that extra moisture will just soak right through and uh, leach out as worm casting so anyway hopefully hopefully you're sharing this with people hopefully you found this useful and you'll do it Please, if you do, put comments in. Tell me how you're doing it, how successful you are. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have questions, go ahead and comment. I'll be glad to answer them. If you like what we're doing here on the farm, please subscribe to our channel. And uh, we thank you for watching.